A very good evening to you. It's Tony Hell here from St Paul's Vicarage in St Albans and it's night prayer on Wednesday, September the 16th. And the song Build Your Kingdom Here by the Wren Collective and Ephesians 4.16. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So as we reflect on the day, thank God for all the good things, all the things he's enabled and helped you with. Give glory to him. And where there's been pain or failure or, or not, not having a big enough vision of God, not perhaps being creative in ways he'd love us to be. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another, bringing it right into the light, where we've sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Receive the forgiveness. It's all available for us. And the, the, the difficult part of all this is bringing stuff to light. And it's living in the light. But God has forgiven us already in Christ. But it's appropriating that and bring it into life and, and dealing with anything that arises from it we need to sort out with people that we can live well. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. The song Build Your Kingdom Here. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here, we pray. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why, why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church and we need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives, for you're our joy and prize. To see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's sake. We are your church and we pray revive. This earth, we're praying for revival. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here, we pray. Unleash your kingdom's power, reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church. We are the hope of earth. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire, win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. We pray, change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. We pray, let's win this nation back. God's kingdom is advancing <clears throat> and there are changes and there are changes in society. Uh, there was a conversation I think Tom Wright had with someone who was an expert ancient historian, although not a Christian, and they both agreed that the Roman Empire was incredibly cruel. Um, you went for entertainment to see animals fight animals or animals kill people, uh, the gladiators. Um, and the kingdom has advanced, but not as much. And the church is the is the way it advances. It's through Christ's body. And we need to pray for more power for the church. I feel often in our atmosphere we think the world is in the ascendant and the church has got to stand firm. And there are times when that's true. One of the letters to the seven churches in Revelation was of a people who, who were doing well just to stand against the tide. But actually I think uh, God's kingdom can be rolled back. Our world doesn't have all the answers and in this time it's shaking. 
And so there's a real thing of the church arising. And in this song it says, we seek your kingdom first. Actually, that's uh, quite a challenging thing. We hunger, we thirst, refuse to waste our lives for you are our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released, to hurt the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church and we pray revive this earth. We pray change the atmosphere, build your kingdom. And Paul, as he dies, has also big vision for the church. <clears throat> he'd seen in Ephesus that when he'd preached, people had become Christians and so many had become Christians. It'd been amazing. Um, and people had really repented. They'd burnt huge numbers of, of uh, occult type books. Uh, so they hadn't sold them to get the money back. They just made a loss on it, but they got rid of them. And they changed the spiritual atmosphere. The nation the, of Ephesus or the place of Ephesus was coming to God. But of course that caused the problem that all the... Um, the occupations which depended on idolatry were struggling, the silversmiths particularly. And so there was a big row because they motivated people. A bit like I hear now with climate change when, you know, fossil fuels are in the, um, under the lens and should diminish. Um, people pass the big law. I was reading of a place where they passed the big law about climate change and realised that it must happen. But actually, the the gas and the coal lobbies and the and the oil lobbies are very clever, <clears throat> and they're not going to lie down. And so, in these places, uh, there were strikes from people who were afraid it would affect their livelihoods. And it was just like the um, we hear in the arena in in Ephesus. All these people got together and shouted for th two or three hours. Uh, Long live the god of uh, of Ephesus, Artemis, the god of Ephesus, and. And that was a real counterattack. So in this taking of the nation, um, the devil plays sneaky. Um, it's like with the smoking. It was quite clear, wasn't it, with smoking, that it was a bad thing. But they developed a PR term, a firm, based on the fact of just sowing doubt. And they sent people out and they sowed doubt so that smoking carried on being advertised and being thought a good thing, probably for was it 30, 40, 50 years after it was known it wasn't? That's the nature of the world that we're in because it's run by the evil one who does not want to see freedom and harmony and healing. And we've got to be careful that we're God's people in it because we may have vested interests. There may be challenges of the areas we work in to live in. And uh, some of these things are not just Christian things like the care of the planet is not just a Christian thing. But it sure is a battle. Um, it was wonderful when there was debt relief for some of the nations. Now, there is a thing as moral hazard. But wasn't it wonderful that when people are hopelessly in debt, that was what was uh, thought of in the Old Testament. I'm not sure it was always done by the Jews because it's costly. But God's plan is that the church will be influential. And he says in Ephesians 4, uh, when we have the fivefold ministry equipping us to grow maturity, we won't be like infants tossed back and forth. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we'll grow up to, in every respect, become the mature body of him who uh, is the head, that is Christ. And the final verse, from him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The church is really, really important. It's the body of Christ. But never forget, Christ is the head. And if you cut your head off, your body doesn't do very well. So it is intimately connected to the head. And when you twiddle your toes, it's commands in the brain that are making that happen. So we have in the church um, real tasks to do things whose hands, uh, the head can't uh, just think it. It needs the hands, it needs the feet, it needs the eyes, it needs all the different parts of the body. Uh, the church is vital, but it's all related to Jesus. And so I think the real danger sometimes, I think uh, there was a danger of, of the church saying, give, me, give us a church and we'll do the mission, give us the franchise and we'll do it by the book. It's got to be intimately connected. And when you see Jesus, you see him coming to fulfil the law. He came as a perfect Jew. 
but what freedom he had what what creativity so when we're seeped in scripture we see the way god has handled situations in the past but we need to be intimately connected to the head as to how to rightly handle the situations we face now because it's not just look up a rule book and apply it it's not like case law it's much more individual than that it's much more like parenting when you know schools have got to steer to institutional rules but parenting is a different skill altogether um, it's the skill of encouraging and if a child realizes they've gone wrong well then you don't need to dwell on that you just want to get them back on the road so it's a whole different ball game and from Christ the whole body joined and held together none of this individual stuff we're at the church by every supporting ligament and there are supporting structures it grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work so it's a wonderful picture of the church but this letter to the Ephesians is written to churches and it's it envisaged churches it doesn't think of a, of a Christian being on their own uh, I've grown up in an era when I think you could think of becoming a Christian and not joining a church and the, the New Testament doesn't know that and you, if sin is about isolating us then you cannot become a Christian and remain isolated you've got to grow in relationships about restoring relationship will that always be easy not at all because you're not the perfect article and nor is the other person and so it's imperfect people coming together what's the glue it's one sense the Holy Spirit within us in another sense it's building yourself up in love speaking the truth in love and what's love like patient kind bearing with one another keeping no records of wrongs always hoping always persevering love never fails it's that sort of love each part does its work so what's the next chapter for us and obviously as I would tell there's a new chapter for the church here there's a new chapter for me as I join a, a church elsewhere and we go to another church elsewhere but we're all part of the same body what's the role for the church in England and how does it how do the sinews and ligaments which bind bits together work um, and that we may grow to maturity that the church may grow up dear John Wimber talking personally said he had this lovely phrase and it God help me to grow up before I grow old uh, there's a right time for youth there's a right time but we're to keep growing we're to seek God's righteousness as well as his kingdom father so we pray that the church may grow up before it grows old and there will be some gains that will be kept and passed easily to the next generation because they're real wins but also there will be space but we pray for people to grow mature quickly we think of people in the Bible who grew mature when they were young Timothy was one who Paul helped to have a maturity so he could lead even when he was young and so father we pray for maturity in the body of Christ and we pray for the working together that the church may be the learning place for us to be outside in the marketplace that Lord you'd help us to be connected to you Christ and then working with each other and so we pray for unity but we pray for collaboration we pray for the different gifts we pray for the recognition of people and their gifts so they can work well together and doing it under the as it were the or the orchestra's baton the conductor's baton that of Christ and father we thank you for the amazing vision that you have for the church and that it crosses all the denominations it is the church and so we pray for the church in St Albans and for your blessing on it and enabling it to join together and work together and to build itself up in love and to grow. And we pray for our world that it may get a church which helps it to come into the light. And we pray against the evil ones trying to cast doubt or to uh, arrange forces to stop the kingdom of light advancing and we pray Lord as, as that is a 
strong process that there will be a strength of Christians taking the kingdom for God. And to change the atmosphere, we pray for an atmosphere of change. We pray, Lord, that the uh, you'd help us to be a praying church that the battle is won in the spiritual realm because we know our brother is never our enemy, but he may be acting at the prompting of the enemy, the devil. And Father, we thank you that you're a good God and that your kingdom brings life and joy and peace, even if it brings struggles and problems in the process, like it did for Paul in Ephesus. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you've redeemed me, Lord God of truth. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, who's alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. In peace will I down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And so go forth into the world in peace, but be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. That is a Pauline blessing from 1 Thessalonians 5 as he's signing off to a new church. What a wonderful blessing it is. So may God bless you and go forth into the world in the power of the Spirit and to make changes, to have an impact for his kingdom. And God be with you. Joy and stamina to you. Every blessing. God be with you. Bye-bye.